Hey guys, I'm Sophia. And I'm Diana. And we're really excited to be back for another virtual lesson. And we have a fun story from the Old Testament. But first, we're going to start off with a song. And we want you guys to participate. So stand up and praise God together. Nice job, you guys. Now that we've gotten some physical exercise, now we can do some biblical knowledge. Today, we will be learning about a king named Jehoshaphat from the Old Testament. Let's get ready to listen. Stories of the Bible. Jehoshaphat. This is Jehoshaphat. Oh, hello. Who was one of the kings of Judah. He was a good king. Yeah. Who strengthened Judah and he did what was right in God's eyes. He obeyed God's commandments and God was with him. There were other countries around Judah who wanted to wage war on Judah though. Huh. And one day messengers came to Jehoshaphat, hey, hey, Jehoshaphat and said that the armies of three kingdoms were marching towards Judah. Oh no! Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged God for guidance. told everyone in Judah to start fasting. People from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek God's help. Jehoshaphat stood before all the people and prayed to God. He asked for God's help, saying, O oh Lord, God of our ancestors, you are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. He told God of the things that God had done for Israel before, and he asked him to stop the armies that were coming for them. He said, We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. All of the men of Judah stood before God with their wives and children. The Spirit of God came upon one of the men who was standing there, and he said, Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid, for the battle is not yours, but God's. He told them that tomorrow they would march out against the armies, but they would not need to fight, for God would be with them. Then King Jehoshaphat and all of the people of Israel worshipped God. The next morning, the army of Judah went out to battle. Listen. Jehoshaphat said to them, Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Jehoshaphat sent the singers to walk ahead of the army, and they praised God as they led the army. At the very moment they started praising God, 
God caused the armies of the other kingdoms to start fighting among themselves. So when the army of Judah came to overlook the battlefield, uh, wow. the enemy was defeated and not a single one of them had escaped. The army of Judah went and gathered the valuables from the valley, and there was so much that it took them three days to collect it all. Wow. They praised and thanked God who had given them victory. Then they marched into Jerusalem praising God who had defeated the armies of their enemies, and the kingdom of Judah was at peace. What a great story about obedience and worshiping God. We see that Jehoshaphat did not try to claim the victory as his own, but he made his people worship God for helping them gain victory over their enemies. And what a great example for us today. We may be going through different kind of battles, but remember that we can always ask God for his help and for guidance. But at the end of all of that, always remember to praise him. A really great verse we can memorize from this story is written in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, and it goes like this. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I know a really fun way we can memorize this verse. Let's repeat with me in a loud voice. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God. 2 Chronicles 2015. Another way we can do it is in a really deep voice. Let's try it together. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. 2 Chronicles 2015. And last time, but in a Now that we've memorized our verse, let's get started on a really fun project. A big part of the story is worshiping and praising God. There are so many ways we can do that, but one fun way I can think of is playing instruments and singing. So today we're going to show you how to make three different instruments. And based on what you have at home, you can make one, two, or all three of them. Let's get started! The very first instrument we're gonna make is a shaker. And what you're gonna need is this mini water bottle, this thing that comes from toilet paper, tape, any kind, scissors, and I have popcorn, but you can use pasta or any grain. Ask your mom for that. So the first thing we're gonna do is open this water bottle and fill it with this popcorn or whatever you have. Try to do this neatly without spilling it like I am, but we're doing the best we can. And fill it up. I can put a little more. Fill it up, maybe halfway, maybe a little bit less. Then we're gonna close the cap and put it on top of here and tape it together. We can use our tape. To tape it at least on like four sides. Let me do one more. And what you can do after this step is actually take your tape and decorate around here and it'll look really nice. And you have a shaker. The second instrument we will be doing is a guitar. All you will be needing is an empty cereal box, some rubber bands, and scissors. Go ahead and cut out a small circle or a big circle like I do have here with your scissors. And if you are too young, ask your parents to help you. Next, put your cereal box on the side and stretch these rubber bands all around until the middle of your circle and add as much as you want. 
I am going to add five. And there you have it, a guitar. <laughs> the last instrument we're gonna be making is called a pan flute. I'm sure you guys have seen this, but what you'll need is a bunch of colorful straws or regular ones, whatever you have, tape and scissors. And the very first thing I did is I pre-cut two kind of long pieces of tape and I lay them down sticky side up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each straw and lay it out on the tape and try to do them as evenly as possible. Okay. Ah. Really sticky, get some help from your parents. Okay, I've laid out about 15 straws, and then I'm gonna put the second piece of tape on the other side to hold them all together. Just like this. And you're almost done. All you're gonna do is take your scissors and cut diagonally like this. See, that looks like a pan flute. And now you can play it. If you made any of these instruments, please send us a video of how they turned out and how good you sound playing them. It was great hanging out with you guys. We had a lot of fun and we hope you did too. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.